lesson we're going to be examining the effect of a subsidy on the market for a particular good or service. The market we're going to look at today is the market for corn in the United States. Corn is a heavily subsidized product in the United States. What impact does this have on the market price and quantity of corn and the consumers and producers of corn as well as the taxpayers whose money is being used to subsidize corn production? Let's start by defining a subsidy. A subsidy is simply a payment from the government to producers of a particular product for each unit produced. Essentially, a subsidy is a tax in reverse. In a previous video lesson, we defined a tax as a payment per unit from producers to the government. In this case, the government wishes to encourage the production of particular goods and make them more affordable for consumers. Therefore, a subsidy has the effect of increasing the supply by decreasing the marginal cost of production for producers of a particular good. Let's look at the market for corn on the right. As we can see, without any government intervention whatsoever, the market for corn will lead to an equilibrium price of $7 per bushel, and 20 million bushels of corn will be produced in the United States. Let's examine the effect of a $2 per bushel subsidy. In the previous lesson in which we discussed the effect of a per unit tax, we explained that a tax on a particular good will increase the marginal cost to producers at each quantity produced by the amount of the tax. The effect of a subsidy will essentially be to decrease the marginal cost to producers at each unit of output by the amount of the subsidy. Therefore, a subsidy of $2 will have the effect of shifting the marginal cost curve downwards by two dollars at every quantity. So let's just choose one quantity on our supply marginal cost curve here and, and plot a new point exactly two dollars below the point on the supply curve. We'll put a couple of points here and one more point up here and we can even look at our price intercept which it turns out is two dollars so the subsidy will shift the supply curve all the way down so that it begins at the origin. We've plotted some points exactly two dollars below our original supply and marginal cost curve. Now what we can do is draw the new supply curve following the subsidy. As can be seen, the new supply curve is two dollars below the original supply curve. This reflects the fact that producers of corn are now receiving a two dollar subsidy for every bushel of corn that they produce. As we can see, following the subsidy, the supply of corn has increased and the equilibrium price paid by consumers has decreased. Before the subsidy, the price was around $7 per bushel. Following the subsidy, the price falls to just below $6 per bushel. And the quantity demanded will increase due to the lower price. From around 20 million bushels to somewhere around 23 million bushels. Our analysis of the effect of the subsidy is not complete though. Because despite the price of just under $6 that consumers are paying, producers are actually going to receive an additional $2 on top of this. This represents the payment from the government to the producers for each unit produced. Since they're producing around 23 million bushels, producers will now receive an additional $2, which is represented by the vertical distance between the new supply curve and the old supply curve. So to show the actual amount of benefit that producers enjoy from this subsidy, we must continue our dotted line up to the old supply curve and draw it over to our price axis. Now we can see that the price that consumers pay is somewhere below six dollars. We'll call that PC for the price that consumers pay. However, we can also see that the price producers see or the price that they enjoy is somewhere above seven dollars and just below eight dollars. Of course the difference between the price producers receive and the price consumers pay represents the two dollars that the government is paying producers. So now we can see the effects of the subsidy in the market for corn. The reduction in the marginal cost of production causes an increase in the quantity demanded due to the increased supply of corn. However, due to the $2 payment from government to the producers of corn, the price that producers receive, PP, is actually greater than the price that consumers pay, PC. To continue our analysis of the effects of the subsidy, we need to examine the impact that this subsidy has on several different stakeholders. So we're going to look at the impact of the subsidy on consumers, 
We'll, loot, we'll do that by examining the impact on consumer surplus in the market for corn. We'll also examine the impact of the subsidy on producers, which we can determine by looking at the impact on producer surplus. And finally, we'll look at the effect on taxpayers in total welfare, since taxpayers, of course, are those who are paying for this subsidy through their own uh, taxed income. So let's look at our graph here and we'll see what happened to consumer surplus as a result of this subsidy. Consumer surplus before the subsidy was represented by the area I am currently outlining in green. Everything above the old equilibrium price of $7 and below the demand curve represented the consumer surplus in the market for corn. Clearly consumers are going to be better off because of the subsidy. So those who consume corn, such as, of course, the average household who eats corn, but more likely big industrial users, such as those who use corn to make sugar, high fructose corn syrup, which goes into many of the food products and beverages that Americans consume. This could also benefit the um, ethanol producers in the United States who use corn to manufacture corn-based ethanol. The increase in consumer surplus enjoyed by all these consumers is represented by the yellow shape that I am showing here. Consumers of corn enjoy a greater level of total surplus equal to the area represented by the yellow shape. So the yellow shape represents the increase in consumer surplus because now the price that consumers pay is lower at PC and the quantity that they enjoy is greater at somewhere between 20 and 25 million bushels. The lower price means that consumers enjoy more welfare. Now how are producers affected? I'm going to outline now in blue the area of producer surplus before the subsidy. Before the subsidy, producers enjoyed an area of total surplus below the price of $7 and above the supply curve, this triangle outlined in blue. Now, because they are producing a greater quantity of corn and they're enjoying a higher price for that corn of PP, which is above the original price of $7, producers enjoy additional producer surplus equal to the green triangle or the green shape that I am outlining here, not exactly a triangle. So producer surplus is increased between, because the price that producers receive is now greater. It's now PP because in addition to the just under six dollars that consumers are paying, producers are receiving, receiving an additional two dollar subsidy. Producer surplus increases by the area represented by the green shaded area. Now the next question would be what is the effect on taxpayers because before we can determine whether or not this subsidy led to an overall increase in community surplus or total welfare we must examine the effect that it had on taxpayers. So what I'll do now is I'll outline the area representing the total cost of the subsidy. So what is the total cost of this subsidy? How can we determine how much this subsidy costs taxpayers? In purple, I will outline the area that represents the total cost of the subsidy. So to determine the total cost, we have to take the amount of the subsidy, which is $2 per bushel, and multiply it by the number of bushels produced. And what we get is this purple outlined area. Of course, there is overlap between the benefit enjoyed by producers and the benefit enjoyed by consumers and the total cost of the subsidy. But one thing should be clear. The total cost of this subsidy exceeds the benefit enjoyed by producers and consumers of corn by the amount represented by the purple triangle. In other words, the total cost of this subsidy is greater than the total benefit of the subsidy. In economics terms, we say that there is a loss of total welfare resulting from the subsidy. The abbreviation we oftentimes use is dead weight loss or DWL. This subsidy ultimately costs taxpayers more than it benefits the producers and consumers of corn. This of course is because the amount of corn subsidized times the actual per unit subsidy ultimately adds up to a greater amount than the increase in consumer and producer surplus. So on our graph we see that the yellow area which now appears to be red and the green area which now appears to be black is smaller in total area than the purple, black and red areas combined. This subsidy leads to a loss of total welfare. It represents a transfer of welfare from taxpayers whose money is being used to the producers and consumers of corn. Of course, what is the opportunity cost of the subsidy? The opportunity cost is whatever else could have been provided with the money used to subsidize corn producers. This could include education, infrastructure, and other goods that the government may have provided instead of increasing the quantity of corn supplied by the nation's producers. 
In the next video lecture, we're going to apply linear equations to determine how a subsidy, a per unit subsidy, affects the supply equation. And we'll use the same example here, the market for corn, but we'll come up with the more accurate impact that the subsidy for corn producers has on price, quantity, and total welfare in the economy.